here we go. Time for the taste test. Want a bite? <laughs> this is our season of indulgence. Please like and subscribe. Ring that bell if you want to see our next video. Bye! Let's go over the ingredients that I'm putting into my enriched rolls. Um, right here I've got a cup of water. I've got a medium sized egg um, topped off to a quarter cup with water. You could use a large egg which should be a quarter cup. I've got two teaspoons of salt. Two teaspoons of olive oil. I like the taste of the olive oil in my rolls. You can use butter. You can use any oil that you prefer. You can even two tablespoons of sugar. This is an organic sugar. It doesn't matter. Use what you've got. And a half of a cup, which I heated in warm water, very warm water. I just put it in a pot and heated my buttermilk. Your egg also has to be room temperature. Four cups of flour. In here, in my cup, measure cup, I've got one cup of water. Now I have water to blood temperature. Now how do you test that? If you put your finger in it and it stings, it is too hot. You want to be able to comfortably put your finger in it and leave it. But it's warm to the touch. I'm put adding my two tablespoons of sugar. And now I'm just going to stir it so it's not a granule. And this is also done so that whenever I pour my water into my flour, I don't have clumps of sugar in the bottom. Now this is rapid rise. Use what you got. Use what you can get. As long as you make sure you look at the date. Because if it's old yeast, you're not going to get a rise that you want. You don't want to make your dough, let it rise, and it doesn't rise. I've done that. So always, 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 no matter what anybody says, you want to test to make sure that your yeast works. So you can see I've got a half inch over a half inch of yeast head. See that? Kind of like what it looks like on a beer, as my husband pointed out. And that's what you're looking for. I got a really good active yeast. So now we can continue with our enriched dough for our enriched bread. It's really not hard to make bread. I always sift my flour. This, this is 100% all-purpose. I've got my two teaspoons salt. You want to make sure it's blended before you put your yeast in. Blend it in your flour. So I'm adding my salt. I've got here, your egg also needs to be at room temperature and um, because you don't want anything to interfere with the rising of your dough. In here, I have two tablespoons of olive oil. See, I forgot about my buttermilk. I'm going to put this in first. I'm going to put it in my mixer. And I'm just going to give it a stir with my mixer. And I put it on low. When you're using an electric mixer, you want to put it on one, two, maybe three, but you don't want to go much higher than that to knead your dough. So right now, I'm going to put in most of my yeast and all of my buttermilk. Why use buttermilk? Because it gives a little bit, a little bit of a tang to your dough. Not much, very little. Now I'm putting the rest of my yeast in. I, the reason I held some back is because there's a lot of 
the reason I held some back, there's a lot of things that affect flour. I've added a third cup of liquor to my measuring cup, just in case I might need some. I'm sorry for the noise, but it, it's unavoidable. You see how there's crumbs on the bottom. That dough is not picking up everything. I'm going to give it a little bit more time. And if I'm not get, getting a dough ball, is not complete dough ball with all that flour, there should be no flour on the bottom of this. I'm going to add a little more liquid. At this point, it's picking it up pretty good. There's not a lot on the bottom. I want to fill my dough. Okay, my dough, at this point, you see how sticky? Do you see how sticky that was? It's got enough liquid in it, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so I'm not going to add any more liquid, but I need to get it off that hook and get it down here so that, look and see how it's sticking to my hands? There's still a lot of liquid in that dough that's not been distributed. I need that in the whole dough ball. I'm going to get it off this hook again. A lot of people say it's just a pain using these mixers because you have this problem. Yes, it is. The alternative is doing it by hand. I've done that. Then you get pain in the arms. No, not necessarily. I mean, it's a workout. It gets a workout, yes. Let's see how sticky that dough is. Um, now, see, I, you got to let it. You got to let it knead enough to see where you're at. I'm going to actually probably have to add more flour to this dough. Let's see. When you hand knead, it takes about, you got to knead for about 10 minutes. When you knead with a, a machine, it's going to take about half that time, about five minutes. How often do you have to pull it down off the hook? It should start coming down off that hook by itself and make a fall if it has enough flour. And that flapping is what you want to see. This is an old kitchen egg. We've had it for 15 years. If you buy a new one, it doesn't have the uh, problem the older ones have as far as, what is that part that breaks all the time? The yeah, there's a plastic gear in this in the head that call, that breaks. And it's there for a fail safe, so you don't break more important parts. But um, my husband's had to fix it three times. We actually have a video on how to fix it. And, where to find it in the head and all of that, and I'll put a link down below. Let me see how I'm going. I think it's going to be all right. I'm not adding anything to it. I mean, I actually kind of like it, the dough. That comes out when it's a little bit not not a very dry dough when it's a little bit sticky. I like I like what the outcome of the dough, but you don't want it too sticky. And you know what? If you fill it, and it's just really really sticky, adds add a little bit of flour, but only a tablespoon at a time. A little goes a long way. And I'm going to keep my dough just like it is. Okay, I took it out of the dough out of my mixer. And um, at this point, I can tell you my dough is not ready. And how do I know that? It should... It should bounce back. It may not bounce back completely, but do you see the holes? 
that I'm pushing with my fingers, there's, it's staying down. If it's ready, it'll, it'll pop back up because I'm just lightly touching and it's not. So I'm going to hand knead it. And the reason I'm hand kneading it too, I could leave it in the machine until it is ready. But I want to show you how to knead. Okay? It's not hard. I mean, there are people that do it. They'll slap it around. That's not necessary, but you know what? If you got some aggression, you can do it. But this is one way, which I think is probably the proper way. And you see how it's, my hands are clean, but it's still got a little, some stick to it. That's, that's good, but that's also a sign your dough's not ready. But I'm close, I'm close, so I'm going to just, I'm mixing my dough as I'm going. Every so often, you don't want to over knead it. Oop. We're not there. See, I could have had it in my mixer for about a minute and I'd have gotten it there. It takes longer when you're doing a hand kneading, but it is a workout. Now you see how it's doing? I'm going to get it into a ball. And this is still sticky, which is okay. It's not quite, but it's not as bad as it was. This is all about developing the glutens and getting that texture. You want to get your texture right. I, mean, which I talked about the window test. Let's check that. So you, any one of these, if the window test works, and then you see you've developed gluten. See how I'm pulling that dough? That's because of the gluten. And what I want to see, I want to be able to pull it without it breaking. And it's so thin that you can see, th see your fingers through it. And I'm not quite there. Almost. 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 I'm very close. Actually, if I was to go ahead and throw this in the bowl and let it rise, it would be okay. The, the rolls would be delicious. You could also make a um, loaf. Put it in a loaf pan and make a, just make a, a loaf bread with it. You can slice and make your turkey sandwiches with we like the turkey sandwiches on a roll. I should, when I say we, I mean my husband. So I love my husband and I'm going to do what I can to make him happy. And I'm still not getting. And this, the main thing is, is when you do just tests like this, you want it when you're doing your very last rise. Or you, once you've done your first rise, you need to make sure it's sit long enough. But that window pane... And I'm there. I don't know if you see it. See, it still breaks a little bit. It's okay if it breaks a little bit. You see how I've got it really thin? I don't know if you can see my finger through that. I mean, my Lord, this is so close. Normally, I would finish it up in the machine. I just want to show you how to knead, what to look for. You want to, uh, So, I want you to, if you don't have a machine, I want you to be able to make this bread. And I'll tell you something else. I can leave that right there and throw my towel on it. I'm tired. Ah, I'm tired. i got to give it a break for five minutes. Leave it there for five minutes and come back and you may see that it works. I haven't left it for five minutes. I just took that off. And so we're going to go ahead. Now you can use any... You've got to grease this or you're going to leave dough behind. You don't want to leave any dough behind. Work too hard on it. You can spray Pam in it, covering your, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in it. Ham, ham, Pam gives you nothing. It doesn't give you any, you know, taste. I want everything I do to add to my dough. I want it all to add. I want to add something to that party. Now, I'm just... Put it, apply it in my hand. You can use a pastry brush if this is it, your cup of tea. Now I'm going to turn my dough upside down and give it a good... Now the top is covered. 
that dough has to rise to double, which would be probably about here. So I'm going to, you can leave it out on your counter. Otherwise, you will put it in your oven. And what I do is I set my oven at 100 degrees. Once it reaches 100 degrees, I turn the oven off. And let it rise for an hour and check it. All right, it's ready. It's doubled, as you can see. And we do the same test. You push on it. And it pops back up. You want to just lightly push on it and it's popping back up. And you can see bubbles all over it. That's that yeast doing what it's yeast is supposed to do. Now I'm just going to break it down. The main thing with dough is the resting. That's what takes time, not making the dough. I'm just going to roll this out. Because we're going to make rolls. So we're going to go ahead and form the rolls. You just take your hands and just roll them, do an equal amount over, and I, I've got, I'm going to cut it so I can work with a half at a time. I'm just eyeballing it. This should make around 20, 20 to, depending on the size you want, 24 rolls. If you want small rolls. And that's probably best for Thanksgiving or Christmas Day. Now again, I'm going to cut it in half again. Half, half, half. And some of them are not going to be the same. They're not going to, but I'm going, I'll be able to tell. See, that one's bigger than that one. Let's take it, put it over there. And I'm just cupping my hands and rolling it under the cup. Makes it nice. I'm going to put some in there. This doesn't have enough. And you, you know, you, they don't, it's not rocket size. If you want them to be exactly the same, then, you know, get you a kitchen scale and you can put them on there and weigh them. Just cut your dough and make it the same. See, I'm just going to put these on my pan. Give, you got it, it's, it's going to rise again, so you need to give it some room to rise. I can tell how I feel about where it's at. I just have one that was too small, and I'm going to use that to make up the difference. Okay, I ended up with 14 to, uh, rolls. Mine are a little bigger. If you want to have double that, 28 rolls, you just make them your smaller. They're going to rise. I'm going to put them back in a 100 degree oven for um, 40, 45 minutes, something like that. And I'll show you when they're finished rising. Okay, and we're back. And as you can see, our rolls are where they should be. And you see I'm touching them. That was... It just didn't... That little, it gets little dimples and stuff for the folds from... But these are, these are right exactly the way they should be. Now we're going to enhance them a bit. This is an egg wash. And I have just took, took one egg, added about a tablespoon of water just to thin it out a little bit. So, see it's got a consistency of Thin consistency. This one's really thin. And I'm going to coat. And you're going to be like, ooh, when they come out, ooh, it just takes them to another level. For beauty wise, this, the insides will always be the same. I've got my oven on 350 degrees. Oh, excuse me. I've got my oven on 375 degrees. And you want that yolk, the 
egg wash to go all the way down the sides to totally cover the top. It took my first rise about two hours to get it where it was right. And that is because our house is a little bit on the cold side, which where, when I'm working, that's what I like. And I, had my, I put my oven at 100 degrees and turned it off. If I had have left it on 100 degrees, it would have taken probably maybe an hour, an hour and 15 minutes to do the same rise. But the longer it rises, the more flavor it has, so remember that. When my oven reaches temperature, it isn't quite yet. These are going to the oven for 15 minutes. And once that happens, I've got mine double panned. I don't know if you can see that, but I have two pans. Because for my oven, I need to do that. I do not want my bottoms to be too brown. So I'm going to put it on for 15 minutes. I'm going to check the bottom. I'm going to check the top. And they'll probably go for 18, maybe, minutes, maybe 20. And I'll let you know. The rolls went in at 375, and it took 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Now, I want to show you. Listen to this. We have a hollow sound. Now, I want to show you the texture. I'm going to just rip it apart. Yeah. So you can see we have a nice roll texture. Okay, they're done. It took 22 minutes. But if you turn it over... Here it's hollow. It's nice and crusty. And let's rip it in half so you can see the texture. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Let's butter one up and do a taste test. Again, one for the camera. Of course, all right. 